everybody. Good afternoon. This is Emma back in my little creative corner in my living room. It's so much fun. I've had a great week. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you've had lots of creative things going on for you. Lots some nice things happening. I don't know what the weather's been like, but we've <laughs> we've gone from, I literally was wearing shorts last weekend or whenever it was, we had this heat wave here in the UK. There was really hot weather and I got my shorts out. I even got my sandals back out. And now we're back to wearing winter woolies. It's gone Arctic. So one just never knows. It's it's most fascinating conversation, don't you think? When you meet anybody, you can just talk about the weather because <laughs> that's all there is. So thank you very much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I love having you here. And if you'd love to like to leave me a comment, if you'd like to say hello, just say hello and where you are in the world, especially if you're new here. You know, I just love to have a little chat with you. It's great, it's what makes it all about, because otherwise I feel like I'm sitting here talking to myself. It's The comments at the end are just brilliant, and I love reading what you've got to say, whether it's to do with this or not. Tell me what you're doing, tell me what creative things you like doing. It's so much fun to share, don't you think? I had a lovely experience at the weekend. We had our, I've got our little fabricate, my, my, the group that I'm in, we've got an, uh, had an exhibition on over the summer, and we've been doing what we call Meet the Makers, where you can come along and have a chat with us. And we will we'll just show you what we're doing, basically. Demonstrate whether it's weaving or handwork or whatever it is we're doing. And we had this lovely time. Two ladies came from another group that I've joined called Tea and Textiles, which is a local thing. And um, I have to say, it was absolutely beautiful. It was a room full of women. There was only about, there's what, I don't know, 10 of us or something in the end. No, eight of us in the end, I think. And we were just talking and sharing information, sharing information about sewing machines or wool or yarn or how to do things. We were talking about de-stashing and whether we could maybe set up and have a, have a, a session where we all bring our stuff that we want to de-stash and share and swap. So like a stash swap session. I don't know if any of you have done anything like that. Do let me know in the comments if you have. If you've got any hints and tips on how to do it. It just felt really wonderful just to be together, to be sharing, to be talking textiles and life actually as well. There was lots of life stuff going on in our, in our chat and it was like mixing people up. I'd invited these ladies from this other group because I'd given out a flyer about our exhibition and they showed up and it was just fantastic. We had such a good, good crack as they say around here which means good chat, good chat, good gossip, good you know, sharing. So I am so keen to do more of this. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I just think getting together in little groups, having a cup of tea, invite your friends around, invite people you don't know around, have a, you know, hire a church hall or something and just stick a notice up and say, you know, bring, bring whatever you're doing, bring your handwork that you're doing, bring something that you're making, come and just join us and we'll have a cup of tea. I know knit and natter groups have been popular for quite a long time. I know book club sort of things go on. Um, and I just think if it's easy for people to do, easy to access, I'm just so excited. I, I came home absolutely buzzing, I will tell you, and I'm keen to make use of the stash that I've got that I'm, you know, I've been boxing up, getting ready to get rid of, and I'm thinking, well, if we're going to do a stash swap, that would be perfect. I'm not particularly interested in making money on anything. I've had the pleasure of these things. Some of it's just scraps, leftovers, bits and bobs. Um, but to somebody else, they might be absolute treasure, mightn't they? You know, there's nothing like looking at somebody else's stuff and going, oh, that's a fantastic colour or that's, you know, lovely yarn or something. So, so that's kind of where I am. And I think it's valuing things as well, isn't it? It's valuing ourselves, giving ourselves time to do these sort of relaxing activities with other people um, and valuing ourselves by allowing us to do these creative things. It's so important, isn't it, to set aside time for yourself because then you have more to give everybody else. That's always my take on it. So the other exciting thing is I'm in the process of buying myself a bicycle, which I will tell you all about when, I, when it arrives. I'll tell you what I get up to. I haven't had a bicycle for years and I've just decided it's time to get back in the saddle, as they say. I'm not going to be a great, huge, massive, you know, going miles and miles and miles. If I potter about on the roads, that will do me. But I'm so excited to have a go and just get, get, on, get on two wheels again. So lots of fun things happening here and we're going to get on today with these seed heads and see where this little process is going to take us. Okay, so if you were watching last week, 
you'll have seen that I chose a piece of, it's just a piece of scrap really, this is cotton curtain interlining which I use a lot as a background for some of my work. It's a really nice soft kind of um, piece of fabric really, it's great for quilting if you want to use that instead of posh stuff, it's really useful and I thought, I thought what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut myself lots of strips of fabric roughly the same height as this. I did think about doing it um, portrait but I'm going to do it landscape because I just feel as though I want to create a really nice textured background using lots of different fabrics, lots of bits of lace and I might even put some soluble paper on top. I haven't quite decided, as you know this is all a process and it will grow and evolve and develop as we go along and that makes me really excited, I don't know about you. There's no outcome known at this stage, I'm just experimenting, we'll see what happens. Isn't that exciting? Okay, so this is starting with a completely blank piece of fabric and I'm just going to cut things and I'm going for a sort of a linear, vertical linear sort of look and I've no idea exactly how it's going to pan out. This is a complete sort of experiment. Um, I'm aiming just to stitch things down, but I'm going to, as I say, put some, um, probably put some soluble fabric on top of here. So I'm just going to go for, you know, texture. Oops. So I'm just getting everything in a, in a thing here. I'm going for sort of texture. I'm feeling, when you go for a walk, when I go for a walk each day, okay, I'm feeling the hedgerow-y sort of impact, influence, if you like, where it's kind of, especially at this time of year, it's just this sort of tangle of textures and lines and there's no one thing, no one thing dominating. It's all just kind of all in together, boys, everything just there for the taking, if you like. Everything's just jumbled up together and everything's sort of, um, what's the word, mixing and mingling and one thing sets off another. So the shape of one thing might set off something else. Something might be framed by some of the lines, some of the stalks might just frame something else up. And I love it, it's like a kind of a sharing thing. No one, no one plant is dominating so I don't know, I've no idea how this is going to pan out. This is a complete and utter experiment. It might, as I say, be a total disaster, but whatever happens by playing like this, we're going to learn. We're going to learn something. We're going to experiment and see what happens. For me, textiles has always been about kind of pushing the boundaries, seeing what else is possible, asking questions and saying, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? And I think particularly, I, I kind of been reconnecting with um, a fellow student from when I was an art student years ago. I've got a friend locally who, she did the same course as me. And I'm also, not only that, I've reconnected with the tutor on my course who ran the course. So I've kind of been almost looking back at being a student again and thinking, well, what did I used to do when I was a student? Well, all sorts of things. Nothing was off limits. Everything was possible. And... You know, you were always being encouraged to experiment and push the envelope, you know, as they say, push the envelope. So this is kind of what I feel I'm doing today. I have no idea where this is going. It's a complete fresh new start to match the fresh new start in my life. I don't know where I'm going in the house. I don't quite know where I'm going in my life. All sorts of things are kicking off at the moment. Lots of new things I've been sort of telling you there's lots of new things going on. I don't know about you. Have you got lots of new stuff going on in your world at the moment? Um, and it just means that there's lots of potential. There's lots of possibilities. Doesn't that sound lovely? I love the sound of sort of crunchy fabric. Perhaps I should be cutting these and not laying them out. Perhaps I should just focus on cutting lots of bits. That's what I usually do, isn't it? I've kind of forgotten, I think. I've just been spending so much time clearing out stuff. I've kind of forgotten actually how to do this. So I think what I'll do is I'll just cut lots and lots of bits. See where that takes me. I was listening with my husband. We often listen to 
um, Radio 4. Radio 4 in this country has all sorts of brilliant programmes and he does he does these clever, I don't know, downloads and podcasts and things. Um, anybody else listen to Natalie Haynes who does fantastic stand-up comedy but all about Greeks, the Greek um, philosophers and whether they're male or female and myths and legends and she was talking about Aristotle in the one we were listening to the other day. I think it was really fantastic. It was very interesting. He was actually not only a, a philosopher, he was a scientist, which I had no idea. He was very clever, very clever man. But he talked about, um, apparently, now he, he, I'm going to sound really, really knowledgeable here, and I know nothing about Greek philosophers, really. But apparently Plato was more of your, oh, everything's doomed sort of man and everything's known and, and it's not really very great. Whereas Aristotle apparently was all about potential and he talked about the acorn and how the acorn was the potential of the tree, the potential of, you know, planting the seed and who knows what might come. Yes, it might be a, an oak tree, I suppose, but, you know, the idea that you plant a seed and you don't quite know what's going to come up. And I love that. Rather than everything being a done deal, I feel like this is where I am in my life at the moment is there's lots of potential for new things to come in. And I find that very exciting. At a stage of life when, you know, my daughter's sort of grown up and things are a bit more settled, I think there's so much fun to be had exploring new possibilities. So I hope you're doing the same thing, whatever stage of life you're at, and that you have that ability to do exploring things rather than thinking everything's done and finished and hopeless because there's a lot of hopelessness I think around at the moment and I think we need to be not letting that run our own creative worlds we hold we hold the power we hold the power to be creative in our own world that's how I look at it so I'm going to keep cutting little bits of stuff and then we'll get to the point of pinning it on and see what happens next. Okay, so what I've done so far, I've stopped cutting my linear strips. I decided that what I really wanted was lots of little bits like this that I'm just going to pop on the background like this. doesn't matter what it is, it can be as messy as you like. I've got some lovely um, wool here that I'm just... I've got this lovely wool here and all I'm doing is it's amazing when you see the potential in things if you look at things one way you say oh well that's just some boring old wool there's not very much of it where's that you know what's that going to do but if you start to take this wool apart it's fascinating what happens is you get I'm sure some of you may have done this already you get lots of lovely little twizzly twizzly bits which just make their own twists they make their own twizzles and that means I'm not going to be in control of it and this is very much what I'm about, as many of you will know if you watch for a while. My work, a lot of it lately, has been about not being in control of things. So I'm going to show you this. I've just got this lovely stash of bits and bobs in here. Um, all sorts of bits that are already cut. Lots of bits of lacy things. These are just all my scraps. I don't know about you, but I, I don't throw much away. Most of it stays around and gets used in different ways and gets put in a bag like this and then it's really useful for a job like this where I just want lots of bits in the background. I think so I'm just creating this sort of messy background, you know, when you look in a hedgerow and at the side of the road and there's no order to it, everything's on top of each other, everything's jostling for a corner. So I thought, well, I'm just going to make some sort of background I've got various bags like this. I've also got this bag here. So I've also got this bag here, which again has got lots of... I bought these from a lady. She had a big sack of um, lovely threads that she was getting rid of on behalf of somebody. And I just bought a, a whole stack of them for very little money. But look at these tasty little numbers. And I'm sure we can perhaps add some of these into the mix as well. This is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at that for sort of texture. It's all twizzly, it's all bitty, it's lovely. So I'm just going to mess around on here. So all I'm doing is messing about, adding bits on, and then I am going to, I've decided, I am going to put a piece of um, soluble 
paper on top. So anything like this that's a bit too, what I call, too posh, I'm just, I'm just distorting or I'm tearing it. Um, so I've got some of this stuff. This is a scrap from a skirt that I made years ago. It's cheesecloth, I think. And it's adorable because when you kind of really, you have to be quite fierce, you have to be quite rough and really just mess about with it. And look, look what you can create. It's all of these lovely tingly tangly edges. And this is a change. Usually um, I would probably be using my embellisher for something like this. But for this, I just thought, no, I just want to play around with the fabrics and let the fabrics speak. Let the fabrics do their job. And then we'll add this soluble paper on top, which will hold things in place, but also add a layer of its own texture to it. And again, I won't be in control of that. I'm just going to stitch these down and then we'll see what that does. And I might add the linear, some linear bits in before I dissolve the paper away or not. You see, when you just distort the lace, you know, we're just creating this gorgeous background. I'm not sure about this one. This one's a bit white. Um, but again, it's fantastic fabric, this. It was um, it was a net curtain or something that I picked up at a charity shop. And it's been the most wonderful stuff because it just it's just falls falls to, falls into threads like that. So, But I'm not sure about that one. It's not very organic looking, I don't think. So I think I won't use that. It's too bright. So I'm just going to keep messing about with this. I'm going to not try to use too many different kinds of textures. I'm going to try and keep to, you know, maybe half a dozen different sorts of fabrics and then it doesn't get too, too bitty. See bits of muslin like this can be little tangly bits that can just be coming up. Bits of it. This is the stuff that I was cutting before. But again, if you distort it, if you pull it apart, look. Isn't that lovely? And then you can pop, pop it on top. So we can be building layers. I mean, this could be something where you build up... Sorry, this is, my, my bag's just falling off. This could be something where you're building up different layers. You could put the paper on top and then you could be adding another layer on top of that and another... You know, we could add up several layers. So we'll just keep going with this and I'll show you when I'm a bit further down the track. Oh, I'll tell you what. So the other thing I also have which is this gorgeous stuff. I'm sure that some of you may have this in your stash. It's scrim, it's actually builder's scrim. And I've had this for a very long time. I'm not even sure whether you can still buy it. I don't think builders actually still use it. But look what you can do with it. You can do all of these fun things with it. You can just tear it and pull it, distort it, cut it, make lovely, lovely bits like that. Pull thread work basically, <laughs> but a bit more random, you know. So you could be adding that down as a background. So, what I'm doing is I'm disguising this background, and when I put the paper on and we wash it away, we'll end up with some areas which will be seen, some areas which won't be seen. I don't think I want to use that bit. So, as I say, I'm going to carry on with this and just see where it takes us. Look at that, that's lovely, that's lovely. Too much? I don't care. 